hi my name is Terry welcome to my channel today I am going to do a what sold video try to get a lot of content in here so that you can get ideas of what to look for when you're out sourcing I'm going to show you most of the things that sold over the last seven days or so I live right outside of Portland Oregon so I am all over this area every weekend sourcing at estate sales mostly. I do pop into Goodwill and thrift stores every once in a while, but most of my shopping is done at estate sales. So sometimes I will pay up a little bit for items, but I sure do get a whole bunch of items in one day or over the weekend, opposed to driving around to a whole bunch of different garage sales which I also love to do. I'm really excited about the warmer weather coming and being able to go out garage selling. We have kind of had really unusual weather for May. It's usually in the 70s and 80s by now, and we have been just getting a lot of rain and the temperature is only in the 60s. So garage sales are starting to pop up and church sales are starting to pop up. So I'm getting pretty excited about that and hopefully I'll be able to take you along with me to go to these garage sales. I have fought trying to get a GoPro um, case that hooks to, I think it straps over and hooks to my chest. I like to go incognito when I go to estate sales with my camera, but I usually attach it to my purse and it's just way too shaky. So I just did a video of an estate sale and I actually just dumped the video. I can't use it. It was just too shaky. So I am gonna order one for my chest and do the garage sales and estate sales like that. And hopefully nobody will notice. Maybe if I wear black, it'll all blend in together. So here we go. Let me show you what I got. Every year, our little town, which is about 20 minutes outside of Portland, Oregon, does a annual garage sale. So that was two weekends ago. I picked up six different cross stitch. They weren't all dimensions. They're all a little bit different brand. And I paid 50 cents a piece for them. And this one sold for $15. I listed it very late last night and it already sold. So happy about that. Okay, sold this Ring Fit Adventure. And I actually sold this for a friend. They purchased it and they decided they didn't want it. So I listed it and it sold within a couple weeks. And it sold for $55. I purchased this Dremel set, brand new in box from an estate sale for $20. Just a few weeks ago, got it listed and it sold pretty quickly for $85. So these are the types of things that I'm talking about I pay up for. If you were to go to a garage sale, you may find it for five bucks. But to me, it's worth it to pay a little bit, especially when it goes out that quickly. The turnover was really fast. Quite a few years ago, I went to an estate sale um, and I bought so much stuff. It was such a wonderful sale. And the owner of the estate sale company um, at the end was trying to just get rid of stuff. And so I pretty much got these two for free. I don't typically purchase the holiday ones. They just don't sell that well. So I've had these forever. Maybe I have a dollar into each one um, when we were done figuring everything out. And these have been sitting on my shelf for probably three years and they sold for $27.99. I purchased about six or seven of these Everpure water filters. I think they probably go to a home's very large filter system. And I paid $6 a piece for them and I ended up selling each one for $65. I only have one more left after this one. So at our little community sale that our town had, um, there were a couple churches that also did rummage sales. And so one of the church had theirs indoors, which was nice because it was raining a little bit that day. I walked through and picked out a few things and was heading on my way out. 
and I saw these two cards, brand new, these Pokemon cards, just sitting on the table, and I just looked at them, I was like, oh, I might as well grab those. Threw them in my bag, when I got up there and she was counting me out, she just threw them in. She said, oh, you just have those. Had no idea the value of them. I didn't look them up while I was there, but I think it was, the next day, or maybe even a couple days later, when I went to list them, I was very surprised. So this one ended up selling on an auction for $310 with a couple bidders. And then this one wasn't as valuable, but I listed it for $99 on auction and I did have one person bid on it. So got them for free, sold both of them, for $410. Super excited about that. They are both unopened and I believe they are from 1999. So these were so cool. I've never sold a Pokemon card before. So definitely keep your eyes open for sealed Pokemon cards. So I have been driving back and forth to Southern Oregon quite a bit lately. I have some family stuff that's going on over there, but of course, when I have a free moment when I'm over there, I will go to garage sales or go thrifting. And I bought these two items at a garage sale. So I just purchased them and just got them listed and they sold very quickly. I did pay $20 a piece for them. I was very tempted to keep them myself because they are really cool. They hang up in your house and they just hang up on the wall. They look like this hanging on the wall. Very cool. Um, I paid $20 a piece for them and I was not selling them in a lot. I was selling it individually, but the same person bought both of them and they paid $40 each. So I have $40 into it and I sold it for 80. So it just doubled my money, which I'm fine with that because they sold so quickly. So like I've said before, new inbox items are super easy to look up when you're listing them. They're super easy to list and they're really easy to ship. So I'm all right, just doubling my money. So. I'm sure if you saw my other video, you know that I bought out a hobby shop and this was one of the items. I probably only have a dollar or two into this and it sold for $45. It is a Spectrum made by Bachman Trains. It's a little um, train car. I went to a garage sale last year, last summer, and somebody was selling a whole bunch of brand new curtains that they never opened. A lot of them were exactly the same. I probably have five or six of these. Um, this is just one panel. I paid $3 for each package and this one sold for $19.99. Picked these filters up at a garage sale for $2 and they sold for $27.99. I'm pretty sure these are the Home Depot brand. We buy the same ones, but these didn't fit our refrigerator. So I just listed them. I was thinking they might, um, but they sell really well too. I've had these a little bit longer than I usually have them when I sell them. And just a little warning, it says Whirlpool down there because it's compatible to put in a Whirlpool, but you are not allowed to sell water filters that say Whirlpool or any other um, brand of refrigerator. So just make sure you have the refrigerator replacement filter in there and the model number and people will be able to find it um, for their refrigerator even if they have a whirlpool they'll be able to find these replacement ones just by uh, looking up the serial number so don't put a name brand in your filter in your generic filters purchase a whole bunch of monster high dolls brand new in box they do not make these anymore. So if I was to hold on to these for five or 10 years, they would probably be worth a lot of money. I almost didn't pick them up because they wanted so much for them, but honestly, I couldn't leave them behind. She wanted $20 a piece for them. And some of them are only selling for $35. 
So I am okay with a little bit smaller profit because they are truly easy to list and ship. I was worried for a bit because I had them all listed and I did not sell one of them for like a month. And now I have sold so many of them within the last few weeks. I have probably sold about 20 to 30 of them and I still have, I think I have about 20 left. So I bought quite a few. So this one person bought both of these. And typically when somebody just buys one, I just ship it out in a um, side loading priority box. And they fit in here very well. I've, I've never had one damaged. This is not a flat rate. This is just a regular box that you get for free. So they've been working out really well in these boxes. So it's been really easy. But because there's two of them, I'm going to have to do um, just a regular size box. So like I said, I paid $20 a piece. And I sold both of them for $73.94. Okay, so I sold another Bible. I honestly can't remember how long I've had this listed. This one was a super special Bible. I paid $2 for it, which I commonly do because they're just shoved in the book area at estate sales. And usually books are anywhere from $1 to $4. And so this one was only $2 and it sold for $175. So definitely um, look up Bibles when you are at estate sales and garage sales because they can be sold for pretty good money. Okay, I sold this really cool uh, Renaissance Gothic dress. And I don't know if it was a costume at one time or what, but um, I paid $3 for it at an estate sale and I sold it for $75. I haven't had it listed that long, so it was a pretty quick turnaround. It is going international, so I'll be shipping this out today. And here's another Monster High doll that sold, paid $20 for it, and it sold for $50. So the rest of the items have already been shipped out, so I'm just gonna show you a screenshot of some of the other items that I sold in the past seven days. So this next item is from the hobby shop buyout that I did and probably have less than a dollar into this and it sold for $34.97 and it is just a little kit about this size and I believe it's just used for setting up your terrain and everything when you are building your train structure. Here is a Silver Streak Tyco vintage from the 70s train. Um, I did go to an estate sale if you saw that video and picked up a bunch of train stuff so I paid three dollars for this one and it sold for thirty dollars. I just picked this um, Marvel Red Hulk up at a garage sale for a dollar. The box was in really bad shape. I did end up taking really close-up photos of the damage of the box that the Hulk is in because part of the paper was ripped, the plastic was crunched a little bit, but I forgot to disclose in the description how damaged it was. So somebody bought it for $30 and when they got it, they messaged me and said that they had no idea that the box was that crunched and that they were planning on giving it to their nephew. So I messaged them back and said that I was really very sorry that they could either return it for a full refund or they could keep it and I could do a partial refund and that I was sorry that they weren't happy with this item. My apologies, Terry. And they messaged right back and said, no worries, don't worry about it. My nephew's going to end up ripping the box open anyway. Well, I thought that was really nice. So I messaged him back and I said, thanks for being understanding. And I would like to give you 20% off of the item anyway, which was $6. There was still room for profit for me at that point because I did only pay a dollar for it. And he immediately left me some really good positive feedback 
And so that is just a huge difference of how you can handle something. I know when I first started selling on eBay, I would take it very personally and you know message back and forth and spend time worrying about it. I would rather just deal with it like that. You know, even though all the photos showed that the box was in really bad shape, he was being honest. He really did not know that it was that bad. And it was just easier for me to give him a little bit of a refund. And that way he gave me great feedback and he was totally happy. Sometimes it's just not really worth stressing over something like that. Here is another item that I bought from the hobby shop. So this item goes to a train. I probably have a dollar into it or so. And it sold for $24.97. Okay, so this next item I was really excited about um, when I saw it at an estate sale. I ran into this estate sale to grab something else and somebody got it before me. So I was looking around kind of bummed out and under the table, I see this big box of these vintage Brio train set. You know, those wooden trains they did Thomas the Train um, for a few years, the same company did. And I looked inside this box and there were a whole bunch of other Brio boxes inside. I wasn't sure what the condition was or anything, but the price on this was $45. And I started looking up a couple things and knew that I was going to do pretty well on this, but I didn't know how well. I thought maybe I can sell it all for $100, $150. So I put a sold sticker on it. So when you go to estate sales, they'll usually have for you um, either sold stickers or hold stickers in case you are still looking around and it was under the table. It was super clear that this sold sticker was on there. And then I went shopping around. About an hour later, I came back down in the basement to grab it because I was ready to check out and it was gone. <laughs> I started panicking. I was asking the one person that was working down there where it was. She's saying, I don't know. And somebody else that was shopping there said, oh, I saw those upstairs. So I ran upstairs real quick and I caught it just in time before this couple was ready to buy it. And I don't know if they saw it or not. I'm like, hey, those are mine. <laughs> they said, what? I said, yeah, look at the sold stickers right on there. Like, oh, I'm so sorry I didn't see it. It was kind of clear, but I give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure they didn't see it. So anyway, I purchased it for $45 and put it on an auction for seven days and it sold to one bidder of $275. That was the price I started it at. So I had quite a few watchers on it, but only one person bid on it. So I got it shipped out and it's already been delivered and all of my customers pay for shipping. I don't do free shipping. Here is another hobby shop buyout item. I probably paid anywhere from three to five dollars for this item and it sold for $65.97. Last summer I was helping a friend have a, an estate sale. I was helping her just organize it and she gave me so many nice things for doing that that some of them I kept and some of them I resold. This item I was planning on keeping for a while and I had it over the holidays and I was planning on using it and I never did. It's this beautiful Dansk, if you've ever heard of that brand. It, this is a wonderful fondue pan. It's from, I believe the 70s. And there were some items that I just really didn't want to have her give me for free. So I did pay for some items. So I did pay $5 for this and it sold for $149 pretty quickly. I haven't had it listed that long. And here is another Monster High doll that sold for $40. I paid $20 for it. I calculated by the time I'm done selling all these dolls, I will double my money. And I paid $950 for all of the dolls. So my profit will be right around $900 or so when I'm done. But like I said, they're super easy to list and ship. So not too much time put into each one. Okay, you're probably tired of hearing about my hobby shop buyout, but here is another item. And I probably have a buck into this and it sold for $29.97. 
I don't sell clothes too much, but if it's something like this, I will pick it up. It was $2. This is like a traveling t-shirt that's fast drying and it sold pretty quickly for $19.99. Another hobby store buyout um, item. This is a part to, I think, a remote control. It sold for $37.94, and I probably have a couple dollars into it. I purchased a bunch of Gumby and Pokey vintage items from a friend, and I have $3 into this, and it sold for $20. It's a little lunchbox, and it's only about this big. <laughs> it was really super cute. Uh, another Monster High doll sold for $35 and I paid $20 for it. This Monster High doll sold for $50 and again, $20 into it. This vintage Tyco train structure, I paid $3 for it and it sold for $50. This die cast airplane is a good example of the type of thing that I pay up for. I paid $40 for this at a stay sale and I bought a whole bunch of them. So I ended up probably buying about 30 to 40 of these die casts, maybe a little bit more. And I sold this one though for $199. Another Monster High doll. And they sold for $85 for both. This is the second one I've sold like this. I picked this up at a garage sale for $2. It's a little tiny uh, loaf of bread, plastic loaf of bread that has um, little cards in it with Bible scriptures in it. It's called Daily Bread. And I think it's from the 70s. Paid $2 for it. And I sold it for $30. Here is an Athern. A uh, train car that I got from the hobby shop and probably have a couple dollars into it and sold it for $30. And so my last item today is a Monster High doll. Have $20 into it like all the others and this one sold for $100. So keep your eyes out for some of these items. If you have any questions about any of these items, please ask me in the comments below. And thank you for watching my channel. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you on the next one.